What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be adding two further companies into my trading 2 on 2 portfolio. One will be in the communication services sector and the other is in consumer staples. The companies on the left on my spreadsheet here all have five companies or else for example in ETF scenario, there is the Vanguard S&P 500 and the Vanguard FTSE 100 which incorporates in over 600 companies. So again, I'm happy with the diversification there. But the companies on the right in terms of industrials and healthcare, we added a company each here yesterday in the form of FedEx for industrials. And we also added Abbott Laboratories in healthcare. But the bottom two sectors here, we can see that we only have three companies so far in each. And the overall objective in the next few weeks is to have every single one of my 12 portfolio pies to have five companies. Let's firstly start with my communication services pie. We currently have 547 euro invested. This equates to about $650 or so and we're currently up at 9.17%. We have three holdings as of now, Facebook, which is up 5.5%, Walt Disney, which is currently up nearly 16%, and AT&T, which is up 1.2%. The company that we're adding into my communication services sector is Verizon Communications. This company, through subsidiaries, provides communications, information, and entertainment products and services to consumers, businesses, and governmental agencies. The company's CEO is Hans Vestberg and they currently employ over 133,000 full-time employees. In terms of the company's key ratios, we can see here they have a market cap of 252.67 billion. Their PE ratio is just under 11. Revenue is currently 133.87 billion. They have an earnings per share of $5.57. They pay an impressive 4.11% of dividend yield, which is paid on a quarterly basis. And if we see the financial summary down below, we can see over the nine months ending 30th of September, they had revenue decrease of 4% to 43.6 billion. Now, a lot of people would say, if you have a 4% decrease in revenue, you should start kind of being a small bit concerned. But again, as a long-term investor, I feel that any dip in any of these kind of companies, these blue chip companies as such, really do present a good buying opportunity. And even if the company did, let's say, decrease another 4% next in the next financial summary, well, that's even the better dollar cost averaging yet again. And because I'm only dipping into these companies as such, buying one or two shares at the start, it's kind of easier then to gauge if it is going to be dollar cost averaging or if the company's going to go into the green. Another very important thing to gauge when looking at companies to invest in is their income statements and balance sheets. We can see here that their total revenue is currently 131.87 billion. Net income is 19.27 billion with a profit margin of over 14.5%. And then on their balance sheet, they have a total net assets of just under 292 billion, total liabilities of 230 billion, with a debt to, S to, debt to assets of 78.95%. Verizon has ticker symbol VZ, and since this time last year, it's up about a dollar or so. This time last year, it was about $59. But again, because of the massive reduction, like the majority of companies in March, it dipped down to about $50 per share, so it shaved off about 9 or $10. But since then, over the last few months, it has kind of recovered back to its pre-crash levels again. And I believe over the coming years that the share price is only going to increase. We can see now that by adding Verizon Intimate Communication Services portfolio, that we now have four companies in the form of Facebook, Walt Disney, AT&T and Verizon. And based on five years historical market performance, we can see that the average annual return will be about 9.28%. And the second company that we'll be adding today is in the consumer staples portfolio. And we currently have three holdings here in the form of Coca-Cola, which is up 7.21%, PepsiCo, which is up 6.5%, and P&G, which is currently down about 0.23%. And overall, we have 209 euro invested and we're up 4.77%. The company that I'm adding here is Walmart, formerly known as Walmart Stores. It is engaged in the operation of retail, wholesale and other units in various formats around the world. The company offers an assortment of merchandise and service at everyday low prices. And the company operates through three segments, Walmart US, Walmart International and Sam's Club. The company's current CEO is Douglas Macmillan and it currently employs a ridiculous 2.2 million full-time employees, which is a crazy number to think about. And also, it is in the industrial, retail, grocery sector. Some key, key ratios for Walmart. Their market cap is $426.59 billion. PE ratio is about 28.5. And, 
with revenue of 523.96 billion. They have an earnings per share of $5.29 and currently pay a dividend yield of 1.43%. We can see here with the month's ending of 31st of July, Walmart increased its revenues by 7% to 272.36 billion and their net income increased very impressive 40% to 10.47 billion. And again, and also a very important thing to check when you're investing in any company is your income statements and balance sheets. And even at a brief here, we can see that the revenue is 523 billion with a net income of 14.88 billion. That leaves a profit margin of 2.84%. On their balance sheet, they have a total assets of 236.5 billion, total liabilities of 161.83 billion with a debt to assets ratio of 68.43%. Walmart has ticker symbol WMT and since this time last year it was about $119 and you can see over the last year it has gone up quite impressively and is currently sitting at about $150 per share which is up 25.85% since this time last year which is very impressive. By adding Walmart to my consumer staples pie we know have Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, P&G and Walmart. This will give us, based on five years historical market performance, an average annual return of about 10.5%. So by adding these two companies into my portfolio, we can see now that the sectors on the right all have four. So over the next two days, we'll be adding two companies in each of those days. And tomorrow, we'll be adding in one in industrials and the other in healthcare. And then on Thursday, we will be putting communication services and consumer staples to the test by adding in a further company into these also. By Thursday, or even Friday morning, we will then be fully diversified across all 12 of my portfolio pies, and then we will start investing in further into these companies to help improve my dollar cost averaging. So with one more company needed in industrials, healthcare, communication services, and consumer staples, it'd be very interesting to see in the comment section below if you have any suggestions for either of these four sectors, and I'll sure to be taken into consideration when actually choosing a company that I'll be adding in over the coming days. Preferably when you're actually deciding on companies to put in the comment section below, I'd prefer if they're blue chip companies and if you can, make sure to kind of on the S&P 500 as such as I don't really want to have too many speculative companies in my portfolio. I kind of would prefer to have an overall blue chip company so that over the long term is kind of more of a safe bet and although you wouldn't be getting as much returns as let's say if you're investing in companies such as Neo, for example, but I just want to have the more steady blue chip companies as in the long term, that will certainly work out in my favor and you can kind of sleep easy at night by having kind of blue chip companies in your own portfolio and being fully diversified. And with all that being said, that brings the end to today's video. If you liked the video, please consider smashing that like button as it would really help the video out going forward. And also if you're new around here, please consider subscribing to the channel as we're only 16 subscribers away from our next goal of 450 subscribers. Also, more importantly, comment below if you hold either of these companies and also what companies you hold that I don't have in my own portfolio and your reasoning behind holding these companies. So thanks very much and I'll see you all in tomorrow's video.